Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Whit Johnson. As we come on the air, a senior Ukrainian defense official says the region around the capital of Kyiv has been liberated from Russian forces. But new warnings, those forces are now regrouping in the east. Ukrainian troops now moving in, finding absolute devastation in the wake of the Russian withdrawal. And we warn you, these images may be difficult to watch. This is what's left of the town of Bucha. One resident saying Russian soldiers fired indiscriminately at civilians, leaving bodies where they fell. Ukraine tonight accusing the Russians of planting mines as they leave. These new satellite images here confirm the retreat. Most of the Russian forces have abandoned a strategically crucial airport just six miles outside Kyiv. In the face of the carnage, President Zelensky remaining ever defiant, saying the Ukrainian people will not accept any outcome besides victory. Dramatic new video showing Ukrainian citizens in the south coming under fire as they protested the Russian occupation. Several people injured. And tonight, Pope Francis condemning the Russian invasion, saying he is considering a trip to Ukraine. Our team reporting tonight from across the region, ABC's senior national correspondent Terry Moran leads us off from Lviv. Tonight, a senior Ukrainian defense official declared that the entire region of the capital city of Kyiv has been liberated as the Russians retreat from much of northern Ukraine. But they leave behind a grim landscape of death and devastation. In Bucha, northwest of Kyiv, a hellish scene. Bodies lying in the street, bombed out cars and homes, entire neighborhoods destroyed in the fighting. But the Ukrainian forces are now back in control, and residents who stayed here through the battle say they witnessed Russian soldiers gunning down civilians. This man says those people were just walking and they shot them without any reason. Bang! These new satellite images confirm the Russian retreat, showing that most of the Russian forces have abandoned the strategically crucial Antonov Airport, just six miles outside of Kyiv. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the Russians are slowly moving out, but he adds they're redeploying to eastern Ukraine, setting up a potentially decisive battle ahead in the Donbass region. Zelensky says he wants more heavy weapons, and today the New York Times reports that the U.S. will work with allies to transfer Soviet-made tanks to strengthen Ukrainian forces in the Donbass. But the danger in the north is far from over. Ukrainian military officials say Russian forces are planting mines in homes and in the streets, even under the dead, as they fall back. This pyrotechnics team works in liberated towns around Kyiv, checking under every bush, in every hole, for explosive devices left behind. <laughs> Officials say in just 24 hours, they found over 1,500 units in the town of Dmitrivka alone, where under a layer of mist, smoke is still rising from the wreckage of these tanks. Meanwhile, in the south, in Zaporizhia, Russian forces fired explosives to break up a protest, reportedly injuring four people. The region is home to Ukraine's largest nuclear power plant. The humanitarian crisis in the besieged southeastern city of Mariupol deepens by the day. The Red Cross once again trying to get a humanitarian convoy through. Tamela, an evacuee, fled her city, saying she has only one question, why? She says she lost everything and she can't find her son. And tonight, the acclaimed Ukrainian photojournalist Maxim Levin was found dead near Kyiv, killed while covering this war. Levin leaves behind a wife and four children. He was quoted as saying, every Ukrainian photographer dreams of taking a photo that will stop the war. And as the war engulfs so many, Pope Francis told reporters he is considering a trip to Kyiv to call for peace. And he issued a fiery statement, clearly placing the blame for the war on Vladimir Putin, though not directly naming him, declaring, We thought that invasions of other countries, savage fighting in the streets, and atomic threats were a grim memory of the past. But the cold wind of war, which brings just death, destruction, and hate, violently tore down everyone and everyday life. Those strong words from the Pope today. Terry Moran joins us from Lviv. And Terry, you're learning new details on what the Ukrainians are saying about peace negotiations tonight. That's right, Wit. Tonight on Ukrainian television, a member of the Ukrainian negotiating team said enough progress had been made on key points that the outline of a peace deal is ready to be discussed by President Zelensky and Vladimir Putin face to face. Uh, such a meeting would probably take place in Turkey, no time frame. A Russian nego negotiator said there is an outline, but the Ukrainian side is overstating the progress.